Good morning, fellas, and welcome back to Me Plays Games, the show trying its best to juggle two niches at once. My name is Matt, and it's one thing to be able to solve a Rubik's Cube, but it's a whole nother level to be able to solve it without seeing. But a small group of people has worked to perfect doing just that. Who are they? How do they even go about solving the cube blindfolded? How far has the world record come over the years? That's what we're gonna find out today. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for more speed cubing and speed running videos. You can also join us on our Discord server, link in the description. Alright, let's get started. First, let's put things into perspective. According to the World Cube Association database, about 144,000 people have competed in the regular 3x3 Rubik's Cube event. Compare that to about negative zero. Compare that to about 6,800 people who have competed in the blindfolded event. In other words, we can get a rough estimate that 1 in 21 cubers, just under 5%, can solve Rubik's Cube both sighted and blindfolded. This isn't a perfect estimate because it doesn't take into account people who have never gone to a competition, but it should give you an idea of how much more effort has to go into blind solving. But feel free to leave a comment roasting me for making the estimate in the first place anyway! Let's talk about the basic idea behind the methods cubers use to blind solve. If you're familiar with this stuff, feel free to skip to this timestamp, or the next chapter if I wind up putting some on this video. Let's start with a simpler example that has the same basic concept. Imagine you had six playing cards, the ace through six of hearts. Now let's say I laid them out in front of you in a random order and I told you to arrange them from lowest to highest. If your immediate response isn't, hey man, it's kind of weird that you came up to a complete stranger and asked him to unshuffle your cards, I'd tell you that there's one rule. You can only do swaps that involve the card in the leftmost position, which we'll call the buffer from now on. Let's say we have this sequence, 5, ace, 2, 6, 4, 3. What would be the best way to get them in the right order? Well, the card in the buffer position on the left has to be a part of every swap, so it makes sense that the first thing we do is put the 5 in the right spot by swapping it with the 4. Now that the 4 is in the buffer position, we can swap it with the 6, then 6 with 3, 3 with 2, and finally the 2 with the ace. Blind solving methods are basically just more complex versions of this. Like we talked about in my video where we went over the world record progression of the sighted speed solving event, there are three types of pieces on a Rubik's Cube. The centers don't move in relation to each other, so we only need to worry about the other two types, the corners and the edges. What blind solvers will do is assign one edge sticker and one corner sticker as the buffers, then swap pieces in and out of the buffer position until they're all solved. In order to pull this off, each sticker is assigned a letter of the alphabet, sometimes from A to X, a system known as SPEFs. Instead of Y and Z though, many blind solvers will choose to leave out different letters for reasons we'll get into soon. Since corners and edges are solved separately, it's okay that each letter corresponds to two stickers. The memorization starts by looking at the sticker in the buffer position and seeing where that sticker needs to go. Then you look at that second sticker and find where that goes and so on and so forth until you've done that for every piece. There are special cases that come up which I might go over another time. To memorize all those letters, solvers will group them into pairs, then you can use a word or short phrase to remember each one. Letter pairs can be pretty much anything you want. Some possibilities include acronyms like air conditioner for AC, short words like lime for LM, and I also like to use my friend's initials for certain pairs. That comes in handy because when you're memorizing the letter pairs, you can create a story using all the words and phrases you came up with. For the purposes of this example, let's just say that one of my friends is named Bob Roberts. If I start with the letters B R K T W K D Q, my story might start with something like, Bob Roberts flew his kite once a week outside a Dairy Queen. The more nonsensical your story, the better because that'll make it easier to remember. There are 20 movable pieces on a Rubik's Cube, so in order to solve them all, you typically need to memorize about 20 letters, then execute the solution you found perfectly. Blind solving is a pretty big time commitment, especially when you're actually learning how to do it for the first time. I learned during my senior year of high school, and it took me about 5 weeks to get my first successful solve. I'll link tutorials for how to solve the Rubik's Cube both sighted and blindfolded in the description. Many solvers will leave out uncommon letters like X and Q, since it's harder to come up with letter pairs for them. As solvers get faster, they'll use audio pairs instead of stories, where you just turn each letter pair into an abstract syllable by slipping a vowel in between the two letters without turning it into a story. The story of blindfolded world records starts in 2003, at the World Rubik's Games Championship in Canada. 
No video of this record exists, unfortunately, but Dror Vomberg was one of only three people to compete in the blindfolded event. Dan Knights failed his attempt, Shotaro Makisumi got a time of 6 minutes 35 seconds, and Vomberg blew that time out of the water with a 356. If you watched my video about the regular Rubik's Cube speed solving record, you would know that in that event, you do 5 solves, drop your fastest and slowest times, then take the mean of the middle 3. In the blindfolded event, you only got one try and your placement depends on that one solve alone. Today, most blindfolded competitions use a best of 3 format, where you do 3 solves and competitors are ranked based on their fastest successful one of the round. There's no video of the next handful of records, so let's just go through them quickly. Shotaro Makisumi broke the record three times in a row with three different competitions from 2004 to 2005, US Nationals, Caltech Fall, and Caltech Winter, eventually bringing it down to 2 minutes 57.97 seconds. Makisumi is one of two cubers to have held the single world record in both the 3x3 sighted and blindfolded events. The other one is Leon Lowe, who broke the blind record at Caltech Spring 2005 at 2 minutes, 41.54 seconds. At Caltech Dallas Summer, Makisumi took the record back though, with a time of 2 minutes, 18.58 seconds. Over the next few years, several Cubers took turns lowering the record from over 2 minutes to under 50 seconds. Tyson Mao, Leon Lowe, Chris Kruger, Don Yong Chen, Alexander Yu, Rafal Guzowicz, and Vila Sepinen all have the record at some point between September 2005 and the end of 2008. But then on May 2nd, 2009, a Chinese cuber named Haiyan Zhuang started this streak. Zhuang single-handedly lowered the record by more than 17 seconds, culminating in a 30.94 at Xi'an Spring on April 4, 2010. Shortly after his sixth record in a row, though, Zhuang was banned from competing in the WCA for three years for multiple violations of their regulations. While he did make many contributions to the Cuban community in China, he also exhibited a pattern of manipulative and disruptive behavior. When planning competitions, he often lied to delegates and organizers about the number of rounds that would be held. He also repeatedly threatened them with physical violence if they didn't meet his demands. During one competition, he went on a tirade on stage, distracting competitors from their solves. He hasn't competed in the World Cube Association since 2010. But it was around this time that a new method for solving the Rubik's Cube blindfolded was introduced. In 2009, Chris Hardwick and Daniel Beyer proposed the Beyer-Hardwick method, more commonly known today as 3-style, where you memorize hundreds of algorithms to solve every possible letter pair with just one algorithm each. This allows you to solve two pieces at a time, whereas previous methods only solved one piece. In total, you need to memorize 818 algorithms for full 3-style. It's the main method used by top blind solvers today. Learning that many algorithms is a massive time commitment though, so there aren't many people who use full freestyle. This is one of the main reasons being a top blind solver is so difficult. Learning to solve the cube blind at first is hard, but it only requires three algorithms that you do over and over and over. With three style, you have to learn algorithms for every possible pair of pieces, and you'll likely have to do completely different ones for every solve in a round in competition. The first world record after Zhuang's ban was 30.9 seconds by Gabriel Alejandro Orozco Casillas on December 11, 2010. That broke Zhuang's record by just 4 hundredth of a second. At this point you might be wondering, with the world record coming closer and closer to breaking the 30 second barrier, how much longer would we have to wait for the first sub 30 time? The answer wound up being quite a long time. Most of 2011 came and went with no new records, but on October 3rd, Yuhui Shu did this.
Not quite sub-30, but Shu broke Casillas' record by more than three-tenths of a second at Suzhou Open. But it would only be another four months until the first sub-30 time. Hungarian solver Marcel Endry became the first person to ever solve a Rubik's Cube blindfolded in under 30 seconds in competition. He broke the record on February 25th, 2012 at Zonhoven Open in Germany. Entry had been competing in blind events since 2008, and along the way he had already broken several Hungarian and European records. He would also go on to break his own record two more times, first with a 27.65 at Zoon Open, then a 26.36 at the European Rubik's Cube Championship. That competition was held in Poland, which just so happened to be the home country of the next record holder. Marcin Zalewski started competing in 3x3 blindfolded in 2011, but he quickly became one of the best blind solvers in the world. Within about a year of competing, his best time in competition quickly dropped from nearly 3 minutes to just over 30 seconds. In 2013, his efforts culminated in his first and only world record, 23.8 seconds at Polish Nationals on June 29th. That record would stand for over a year, until another Polish cuber named Marcin Kowalczyk did this. Kowalczyk broke Zalewski's record twice in 2014, first with a 23.19 at Bidgosh Summer, then again with a 21.17 at PLS Szczecin. And in case you were wondering, yes, I had to look up a ton of pronunciations for this part of the video. Aside from these accomplishments, Kowalczyk is also known for his achievements in the Multiple Blindfolded event, or Multi-Blind for short. In Multi-Blind, your goal is to memorize and solve as many cubes as you can blindfolded in one hour. You only get one chance to memorize all of them, so you can't solve one, take off the blindfold, and memorize the next. Kowalczyk broke the multi-blind world record eight times in a row, culminating in an attempt in 2013 where he solved 41 cubes blindfolded, becoming the first and for a long time only person to solve 40 cubes blind in less than an hour. That wound up being one of the longest standing world records in cubing history, not being broken until Mark Boyanowski solved 43 out of 44 cubes in 2018. This is a bit of a tangent, but the way the point system works in multi-blind is you take the number of cubes you solved and subtract the number of unsolved cubes to get your score. Highest score wins and ties are broken based on how much time each person took. Kowalczyk solved all 41 of his cubes, leaving none unsolved. So 41 minus 0 is 41 points. Boyanowski solved 43 cubes and failed 1 for a total of 42 points, just barely good enough for the world record. Leave a comment if you'd like to see a video about multi-blind in the future. Over the next two years, the record would only be broken two more times, and was by the same person both times. On October 2nd, 2015, Kaijin Lin just barely broke Kowalczyk's record with a 21.05 the China Championship. Fast forward another year and he did it again with an 18.5 at Shanghai Winter is Coming. That record would stand for about seven and a half months till another blind solver entered the ring. Gianfranco Wanqi is one of the world's top blind solvers, breaking several world and South American records in the four blindfolded events, 3x3, 4x4, 5x5, and multi-blind. His brother Juan Pablo is also a world-class cuber in his own right, having broken world records in the Megaminx event 14 times. John Franco's 18.31 second time here is his only single world record in 3x3 blindfolded, but he had also held the average record twice by this point. Like I mentioned earlier, 3x3 blindfolded events typically use a best of three method, since even at the top level of blind solving, it's common to fail one or two of your attempts each round. Average records only really exist for the purpose of record keeping, rather than determining competition winners. We've only got 8 records to go in this video, and none of them were set by people I've already mentioned. Say hello to Max Hilliard. Hilliard entered the record books for the first time with a 17.8 second solve at Texas Blind Showdown. In June of the next year, we'd see another new world record holder. Jeff Park edged out Hilliard's time with a 17.85 at Dallas-Fort Worth 2018. Hilliard and Park would go on to trade the record back and forth a few more times in the next few months. Hilliard got a 17.55 on July 14th, 
then Park swung back with a 17.33 the very next weekend. Park lowered the record by another fraction of a second in September, with a 17.2 before Hilliard finished off the year with a 16.55. Another four months later, Australian Cuber Jack Kai would get his first single world record, although he's also a two-time average record holder as well. He got a 16.22 at qualification in Brisbane, the first world record to use a technique called the Nod Don. Instead of using his hand to lower his blindfold after memorizing the cube, he quickly nods his head instead. It's unknown who came up with it first, but current multi-blind world record holder Graham Siggins posted and popularized the idea, and Kai was one of the first people to use it in competition. Here's another fun fact about Jack Kai. He's actually one of the few people who does the 3x3 sighted event blindfolded too. This is a testament to how efficient freestyle really is. Some of the best blind solvers in the world can solve the cube faster with freestyle blindfolded than they can with their eyes using a normal method. Four months later though, Max Hilliard broke the record one more time with a 15.5, the first sub-16 time. He also does the Nod Don in this solve. Yeah, go figure, solving a Rubik's Cube blindfolded has gotten so optimized that you don't even touch the blindfold with your hands anymore. Well, that's where the world record stands today. Once again, it's been about two years since the last record, but that's thanks in large part to COVID-19, canceling competitions around the world. The record has come down significantly over the years, and freestyle is an incredibly efficient method, but there's still room for more records. There's a method in the works called the Five Style, where you solve a whopping four pieces at once. If you have any guesses as to where you think the record will end up in the next few years, leave a comment, it's good for the YouTube algorithm. Alright, goodnight fellas, sleep well.